What's up guys, MetalFan230 here, and today we talk The Sound of Perseverance by Death. Death's final studio album. Now, this was around the mid, this album came out around 1998 or so. This was actually, around, this was around the point in the mid 90s where, at this point, <coughs> uh, Chuck Schuldiner had another band he was also working on, on called Control Denied. However, he uh, wanted um, another, w at least make one more album with a uh, death. I mean, I've heard that there's a lot of people who thought that Symbolic should have been it, should have been the last album, um, mainly because he wanted, maybe, because there was a lot, a lot of aggression on, I uh, think, on Sound of Perseverance. I mean, to me, this, to me, um, he, I feel like, like, all, this is, I think this is their best album, probably a good way to end, at sort of like the big grand finale, in my opinion. They yeah, also, also, I think it also shows a different style of death. I mean, I mean, if you think you can sort of tell in this album, like, I think at this point Chuck didn't want anything to do with this band anymore. At this point, yeah, I don't think, I think we're about sort of trying to get fucking sick of it. Of it. I mean, he just want, he also didn't want to deal with all the press because there was all this bullshit and negativity in the, the he had to deal with it in the press and, and stuff, stuff. To me, this sort of feels like the big last hurrah. All, of, all this, the grand finale, the big, big thing, bang, bada boom, ba ba ba. You know, I mean, we obviously it sounds, it sounds like it's a bit. This song sounds a bit charming. It sounds a bit different. Different. Obviously, they have a new, new lineup change. Change. I think this is the final, final lineup. First album. Obviously, we have the new new drummer. We're best known as Richard Christie. I think he also played with other bands like Ice Earth and stuff. He's a very good drummer, I have to say. So he has a good drum sound on this album. It sounds very different and different, of course. And he also has got a new guitarist on this al album by the name of Shannon Ham. Ham, who is another, who is the other guitar player. So that, that's pretty good. And and I got a new bass player by the name of Scott Clendenin. I think I think is his name. I could be wrong or something. Then of then of course. Where is he? Now this album can be. I mean now Chuck's voice on the album sounds debatable. This is also where Chuck's voice is very high. It's debatable because if you compare this album to any of their old albums, it sounds vocally it sounds like it, they're two different bands. Because I think on the more of the older albums, he has sort of a more lower type vocals, where this album it's more higher. You could sort of tell it's sort of two different for bands, bands kind of. The, but like on this album, it's more Chuck's very vocals sound very high and it's very screechy, G and stuff, which makes it sound a bit different compared to other albums. It, so it sounds like it's different bands, of course. So, now. Now enough talk. Let's talk about this out. This great, great w final album. Of course, the first song is called "Scavenger of Human Sorrow," which is a pretty good song, I have to say. It's very progressive. It starts off with a drum intro, show from Richard Christie. He's a very great drummer, I have to say. I think he's also a little bit underrated, in my opinion. Opinion. And it also has a little bit of a flashy lead lead part, com of course, and then and then the rest of the band comes in. Then it works up to some very good stuff. Stuff. It's a that's a very good fast part in the song. It's another another good song. Song song. It's a good 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 opener, of course. And the second song is called "Bite the Pain," which is where the album sort of slows down a little bit. Bit and it's and it has some good good guitar guitar line in there and a good bass line line in it. It also has a very good musical interlude lute in the song song, of course. Next song is called "Spirit Spirit Crush." Which to me, I sort of feels like a single. It has that sort of. Feel, I just feel like it. Just, it does for some reason. It feels like it's a one of the best songs on this album. It has a good bass line of bass line intro, of course. Of course, it's a great, great ba bass. Yeah, great song, of course. Next song is called "Story to Tell," which is another good song, of course. So it has a, a lot of good chord progression and a little melodic lead. I think, of course, yeah, it's a cool song. And it has a good breakdown in there. Then we get to my, probably like my favorite song, I think also my favorite death song in my opinion, opinion I know of, which is called Flesh and the Power It Holds. It's probably the best song on this album. 
them. It starts off with a very good guitar, guitar leads. Of course, sounds pretty good. Of course, and it's all, and then also get, get goes all over the place and has some good solos. It's probably my favorite song off of the Sound Perseverance. Next song is called Voice of the Soul. So it's kind of hard to explain. Playing, playing the song. It's pretty much all another song that's all over the place. Place has some leads, leads and a lot of all good shit. Shit. All right. Next song is called Forgive Us to Suffer. For it has very much a drum intro, of course. It's very old school sounding, similar to like their older stuffs, kinda. That's a good, good song. Next song is called Moment of Clarity, which is pretty very long song. I have to say, pretty much the longest song. It's a very good song. I have to say, it has a very good interlude part in there and there it's very melodic <laughs> so yeah that's, a, that's a moment of clarity is a good song it's probably the last death song ever <laughs> which is a pretty good song oh but there is one more song on this album it's a cover song which is a cover a, 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 a song a song called painkiller which is a cover originally done by Judas Priest now I know a lot of you no, it's a very weird for a death metal band to cover Judas Priest, but yeah, I've heard in some interviews. So I've heard Chuck Schuldiner says he was more into power interviews, saying he was very, very influenced by power metal, and he was really big, big Judas Priest fan and Iron Maiden fan of something. And and, and to be honest, this they, it actually works for this album. You know, I think Chuck's voice has very high, similar to Rob Halford, but it's more screechy. It's a very good cover, I have to say. Probably one of my favorite cover cover songs ever. Now overall, this is their this is Death's a good album. This is Death's seventh and final album that came out in 1998. I mean, I was only four years old at the time. I never heard of Death until until, until about a couple years ago. But yeah, it's a good play. But shortly after this album, it was around 1999, where I believe Chuck Schuldiner was had a diagnosed with some cancer. <sighs> yeah, and he had a. Uh, had some so had to get some surgery, which mainly his family couldn't afford. It was around 99 or 1999 or 2000 that it happened. That there was there was a lot of people did a lot of benefits shows and and stuff to get money for him. And he thought he actually thought it was going to go away, and he actually wanted to do Control Denied, Chuck Schneider's other band that he was going to work on. But uh, I feel like if if Death were to Death would have probably been gone at that point, but he would have done Control Denied. But sadly, in in 2001, Chuck Schuldiner had died from cancer at the age of 34. And it was December 2001, you know, I think, was when he died. I mean, I was seven years old when that happened. Obviously, obviously, people thought that this was the last album, of course. This Now, to me, Death also... So I want to talk about Death for a little bit, but because I think Death is a very, very one of the important bands in metal history because they also built a legacy for other death metal bands to come before, after them. You know, bands like Cannibal Corpse, uh, Deicide, Morbid Angel, stuff like that, and other newer kind of bands sort of that that are influenced by Death. I mean, they sort of build a legacy for other bands in the future, and. Uh, honestly, if Chuck was still alive, I feel like I've heard a, lo a lot of people say this, but if Chuck was still alive, around probably around this point, he would have probably came back to that. He would have made that one album. I mean, that still does do some uh, uh, benefit shows that here and there, but I just wish they would have just made that one album. But I know it's not going to happen. But anyway, Death is a great. This is a, anyway. The Sound of Perseverance is a great album. Sorry if I got a little off track there for a second. It's a great album. Great, great way to end their career, great way to sort of build a legacy for other bands. So anyway, it's amazing and just fucking phenomenal album. I'm gonna go listen to it. It's just awesome. Anyway, I'm gonna get the sound of perseverance by death a ten out of ten. Later guys.